My name is Arturo Vegas. My name is Mingling Ma. My name is Alan Chu. My name is Joshua Dolov. My name is Lamid Vesa. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow here at the Koch Institute. I work in the laboratories of Robert S. Langer and Daniel Anderson. And our project aims to develop a bioartificial pancreas for the treatment of type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disorder which primarily affects children. And in this disease, uh, the body's own immune system actually attacks the insulin producing cells. They have to persistently monitor their own blood glucose levels and inject themselves multiple times throughout the day with insulin. If we can come up with a way to alleviate this, that would be a huge uh, improvement over the overall quality of life for the patient. So we have a goal of coming up with a strategy whereby we can take these islet insulin producing cells from cadaver donors and putting them in a matrix which protects these cells from the body's immune response. Now the challenge with engineering this matrix is that it needs to be able to enable exchange with the environment. So glucose and nutrients need to be able to have access to these cells and insulin needs to be able to permeate out of this matrix. But at the same time, the pores should be small enough so that immune cells can't directly attack these islet cells. So what this image is showing is actually a prototype of, of one of our bioartificial pancreases. The green cluster is actually these islet insulin producing cells. And this is surrounded by a matrix, which is actually not shown because it's a clear matrix. And we've transplanted this into a mouse that's diabetic. This vertical polymer matrix is serving its purpose of physically protecting these cells against the immune system cells, which you see covered onto the material. The body sees the biomaterial as still, as still as being foreign, and it, as a result, it, it attacks it. And um, so we're, right now we're trying to understand the dynamic interplay of how the immune system is interacting with the materials that we put into the patient. So we like to take this a step further and actually develop a material which the body can't recognize. So ultimately, what we envision as we translate this to the clinic is to come up with one formulation which has a matrix that we, what we would call super biocompatible and will serve to protect these cells and also itself not be recognized by the immune system. The polymer matrix that we're developing is based on alginate polymers. And alginate is a very abundant polymer in nature. It's commonly found in marine algae. And many food and pharmaceutical products which are currently out there actually contain this alginate. So the idea to use alginate because alginate is very easy to process into the format we need into the hydrogel. When you make a droplet of it and you pour it in a solution of, of calcium, it immediately gels into that same droplet and maintains its form and shape. We use a significant amount of robotic automation in order to accelerate our discovery research uh, to discover materials that have novel properties for biological applications. Currently we've been testing a lot of these materials, um, insulin producing cells in diabetic animals, and we've had a good amount of success in curing type 1 diabetes in these smaller animal models, um, in the hope obviously is to eventually be able to put these into people so that they don't have to deal with daily insulin doses. You know, they have one procedure and for life they're able to regulate their glucose levels.